Howdy guys, I'm back with more of The Witcher 2. Last time I had to decide if I wanted to help Yorvith or Roche, and I went with helping Roche. So I'm currently in Lorito's residence. I just uh, slaughtered his mama, and there is Vess. It's a trap! Look out! Oh, okay, hi there. He was waiting on me. Well, he's got me at a disadvantage, I think, with the spe Oh! <laughs> a knight in shining armor come to save Oh, jeez. White stallion. Oh, a white stallion. I don't know. The game won't give me a horse. I've been begging for one. Jeez. Kill the son of a bitch! I'm working on it. I'm trying. Hold on. Let me shield myself up here. I gotta quit turning my back to these people. All right. Make him die in pain. Oh, I'm working on it here. She wants. What now, Lorido? Ball shriveling. <laughs> I almost want to keep fighting him so Vess will keep talking trash. She's pretty spicy. Oh, here we go. Died in a fire. Ooh, that felt good. We quick, untie me. We can. Can wait a second on that. You're not in a hurry. Hold on a second. Let's see what we got in here. Let me go ahead and put this up. I don't need this. There we go. Ah, we got a royal mail key, some goodie. Ooh, lots and lots of goodies. And okay, I guess that's just something I can run into. And I thought there was something else over here. Oh gosh, is this fist tech? Was he just doing tons and tons of fist tech? Is this Scarface in here or something? Okay, I can't do anything with this stuff. I guess it's just movable. Uh, let's talk to Geralt, her. Geralt, with no time to lose. She needs help. We need to get her out of here. What? Thanks, Geralt. I heard something behind that door. Oh. Hold on, let me admire those tattoos. She has like a naked woman riding a wheel on her arm or something. What the heck? <laughs> she has some really interesting... Ooh, okay. That one in particular is interesting. All right, all right. Hi. Geralt, with no time to lose. She needs help. We need to get her out of here. All right, let's get her out of here. Um, white myrtle petals, all right. Um, check the contents of the ne oh, okay, this one is it of the next room next door. It must be this room. All right, um, guess I'm gonna find something shady in here. No, Florence. Oh, is this who she's talking about? Moral? Don't leave me here. Please. You don't look like a whore elf. My name is Moral. What month is it? This is no time to chat. Can you walk? I'll not stay here any longer. Even if I must crawl out. She won't make it through the garden, Geralt. We must leave by the front. Lead the way. We'll be right behind you. What? Wait, what, what, Wait, what? What month is it? Lammas. Autumn's begun. When they kidnapped me, it was snowing. Oh my. And a child's father is. This child has only a mother. <gasps> when I realized I was pregnant, I wanted to kill myself. Don't say that. I am N. Shay. What? Lare did Lorito impregnate an elf? Is that... Oh, man, this game. All right, all right, lead Moral outside. Hold on, let's see here. All right, uh, the Witcher did as he promised. He killed Lorito. Those who mourned the commander shed false tears, and those cheering outnumbered them greatly. I think that even though Geralt murdered a man, he made the world a better place. I think so, too. Perhaps not on a grand historical scale, but certainly on the scale of the hapless and downtrodden. Geralt found a moral, an elven girl, in the tower. The elf in the final stage of pregnancy needed to be brought outside as fast as possible. She's gonna pop a, ba a little half-elf baby out here as soon as I walk outside, because I don't need that in my life right now. I just killed some guy. I killed his mother. And now I, I'm not... Okay. I... I can't make it. Uh -oh. I think I... Damn. Her water broke. Geralt change of plans. And I'm... But Back to the tower. I need a clean bed, hot water, and some time. 
We can't be disturbed. Go get help. What? Okay, all right. I don't have to play midwife. Intruder in the tower. What? Defeat this? Okay, so, oh, okay. Instead of delivering babies, I'm delivering soldiers to hell. It turned out that it is easier to get inside Lorito's mansion than to get outside. The terrified Moral started to deliver her child, but this time the Witcher was spared the difficult challenge. Thank goodness. I was about to say, is this going to be a quick time event? Press? Am I going to have to tap Q to deliver baby or something? <laughs> okay. As skillfully as a certified man. As a, skillfully as a certified midwife, Vez took charge of the delivery, proving claims that Roche's men are versatile. Geralt just had to buy the young mother some time, so he joined, joined Vernon, who was holding back the attack in the courtyard, and I guess I'm about to throw down as well. Alright, oh, this guy almost got me by surprise. Oh, there's a- oops, okay, I'm just swinging wildly into the air here. Let's go ahead and use this one. Attack! And here, can I- there we go, I'm using my little bomb thing because I'm kind of surrounded here. I should probably- alright, I should probably axe something instead of flailing. Let's do- let's do this. And let's take Chubby over here. He's a bigger guy, he can help me out. And then switch to Idney, and I'll get this guy, and- oops, I didn't mean to get my friend. Oops, is he mad at me now for Igneying him? I think so. Alright, well, back to flailing wildly, I suppose. <laughs> Don't want to get surrounded here. I'm pretty bad about getting surrounded. Oops, alright, got this guy. I like that they flail around while they're ignited. That really helps um, uh, control the herd a little bit, quite a bit. I really, really like that a lot. Ooh, I love Igni, I love it! I love the magic. I know I need to go down the, um, the sword tree a little bit and get some of the, like, like the footwork and stuff you guys are seeing. But, ooh, I sure am having fun getting a strong Igni, making everything super duper easy. So, I'm guessing- oh, I should- oh, yep, I knew I shouldn't have grabbed that, I was gonna say. I think I'm overweight pretty bad. I probably don't want to pick that up, and I didn't. Um, should I use some of this stuff? Can I just, uh, yeah, sure, let's just upgrade that. I really think that wasn't too bad anyway. There we go. Hopefully that wasn't a waste. Alright, I thought I saw a little red blip there, but maybe not. Ooh, unlocked the door. I hear some fighting out here. Alright, I probably want to pull this out. Alright, yep, we got us a bloodbath here. Let me quick say- Oh, nope, I can't. Oh, yeah, we- Oh, whoa, we got us a- Alright, these guys want my- want my booty here. These guys are pretty big. I don't want them to- I'm pretty sure I did some arm wrestling with some of these guys. This kind of- Oh, 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 I'm trying to get away from them. How the tables have turned, I guess. Alright, let me try this axe again. Let's get this guy. There we go. Did I get him? I feel like my axe's not turning people lately. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong with it. If it's getting interrupted or or what. Maybe I need to put another point in it. Oh, I think that time I got interrupted for sure. Alright, okay. I'm gonna sit here a second and figure out what's going on with Axe. Yeah, he's still... What the heck? I guess it's not taking for whatever reason. Oh, okay. Is he my friend yet? Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with Axie. Uh, maybe I need to put, um... I'm thinking I must need to put more points in it or something. Alright, well, I'm just gonna press right-click furiously until he dies, then. <laughs> when in doubt, right-click. Alright, well, I think everyone's been the herd without me. These must be Roche's fellas. No, I'm not sneaking at all. Who's sneaking? No one's sneaking. Come here, I'm just, I'm just gonna stand back here and cast some fire. The pig's up to mischief again. Oh, who? Am I a pig? Who's a pig? Am I? A pig? Commandant! Oh gosh, I can't believe I'm fighting guards here. What's going on there? What's going on there? Oh gosh, I hope I'm supposed to be fighting these guys. I hope these are the soldiers I'm supposed to be fighting, and I'm like, get him! Well, I guess even if they are town guards, they're loyal to Laredo, so it doesn't matter. All that matters is that I'm able to beat them. I'm like the guards in the first town of Witcher 1 that I accidentally made mad at the beginning of the game. Whoops. Alright, we've got uh, Igni one more on there. Alright, one more. Oh, is that all of them? I think we got them all. Yep. Long load screen here, what the heck? <laughs> Geralt, I see we're in time. Where have you been, Roach? A little problem along the way.
What is this problem? Uh oh. That's a big pro oh no. Wait, what happened? Why did it? Oh, whoa, 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 wait, 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 what? I'm, I'm Roche. Hold on. Do I get any? Oh, I don't get any cool spells or anything. All right, so I'm gonna get ass blasted. All right, I guess I just smack him. This is weird. I can't believe I'm playing. Enough. Oh, Roche. That was weird and unexpected as heck. Well, wait. Defeated by a Dwan. I must be getting old. What now? Consider yourself lucky. Though you deserve torture, I lack the means, so I'll simply lop off your head. You'll die a warrior's death. I don't regret a thing. What? Impending death has addled your mind. I don't regret that it's you. After so many years, it would be stupid to die from an accidental bolt in the eye. Or worse yet, influenza. Is he really gonna kill him? Damn! Lucky again, your archers approach. I defeated you once, Jorven, and I can do it again. Remember that. We shall see about that, oh. friend. We shall see. I'm not sure if I want- The horse and run away, but I'm sure he'll show up again. Bloody non-humans. Oh. Enough of Jorveth. What's with Lorido and where's Vess? Lorido's dead. I saved Vess, barely. What happened? Your plan was hardly the most. A boy, Geralt! A healthy what boy! <laughs> Whose child is that? Morals. Whose? We found an elf woman Lorito kidnapped almost a year ago. He was the father. Oh, man. I'd never touch a she-elf. <laughs> oh good, I'm sure they wouldn't touch you. <laughs> Geralt. Enough! We don't have time for that. The ship's waiting. Oh crap. We didn't. Oh. Uh, what's happening? She died in childbirth? <gasps> she. Oh, jeez. Why did you do it? Why? Oh my gosh. My tattoo's glitching out. <laughs> I guess she couldn't stand being the mother of a human child. Don't touch me! Oh. I hate this town. Poor Fe oh gosh, Bess has a heart, doesn't she? Prepare the boat. We sail immediately. What about the kid? It's not coming with us. And who in this hellhole will take in a half-breed? Saharam, take it to Saharam in Lavendon. And make sure to tell him it's Morrill's child. Oh gosh, so now we're leaving Flotsam, huh? That was intense. <laughs> oh, it has. He oh, it's kind of got pointy ears. Not quite round, not quite pointy. My gosh, I didn't see a baby coming. The assassin had had his day. Very true. He kidnapped Triss Marigold. It seemed like Foltis' life had not been enough. It seemed like the killer also wanted the monarch's former advisor. There was no time to think. It was time to act. Grabbing Geralt, I embarked on a voyage upriver, deeper into the Pontar Valley. There, in a region known as Lormark, King Hensel of Kedwin had made camp with his army. King is the key word here, denoting the central figure in my plan to capture the Kingslayer. The special forces of King made the soil light lightly upon him. Foltest had lost some of their customary enthusiasm, treating us to not one single joke of the how many ways can you skin an elf variety. Which only goes to support my theory that the human mind is capable of producing a finite amount of horror for some manner of reflection springs itself upon it. I love Dandelion. <laughs> okay, so I missed Upper Adern in the Pontar Valley two days after leaving Flotsam. 
that must be our oh chapter two wow i'm finally in chapter two chapter one was super long not that i'm complaining it must have been a massacre bones everywhere how in the world did Glevesig harness so much of the power do you always get so excited at the sight of skulls death mold <sighs> scoff all you want i speak of magic the kind of spells that win wars Thousands incinerated in seconds! <laughs> Power, destruction, annihilation! Yes, after which Sabrina Glevesig was burned at the stake. And the Pontar Valley remains within Edern's borders. Edern is a carcass. Still showing life signs, but the realm's days are numbered. No peasant revolt can change that. You're wrong, Deathmold. This country lives. I can feel it. Like an old wounded bear covered in scars, hounds all round it, but still strong. Still deadly. This will be a good war. Oh my. But sire, the Edernian barons won't dare stand against you. You shall see that shortly. I've prepared everything. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Chapter 2 Prelude to War, Cadewin. At a time when Tamiria and Adern were consumed by the chaos, so typical of an interregnum, Hinselt, Lord of Cadwen, was marching south to seize the dead Demovan's lands. While he had a dubious claim to Lormark, his actions were legitimized by the law of force. Uh, so he has to have a, oh gosh, I don't know the terminology here, Cos ca belly. <laughs> he has to have an actual claim. He can't just waltz in here, even though the claim's not a very strong one. Adern was not completely defenseless, however. Saskia, there's that name again, Saskia the Dragon Slayer, the head of a peasant rebellion, blocked the path of Hinselt's army. Stinnis, Demovan's son, stood at her side. Oh, really? Interesting. Demovan's son stood at her side. The king of Cadwen was no fool. Oh my gosh, and though he felt certain of victory, he decided to hear what his opponents wanted to say. He had hoped to bribe or intimidate the Adernian nobility. Thus began a meeting which would later be fearfully described by chroniclers. Oh, I feel like a Kingslayer is going to show up. I just... Oh, I have an inkling a Kingslayer is going to show up. I just know it. Assass the Assassins of Kings. Geralt knew that Letho had teleported somewhere into the area of Fergen, and Triss Marigold arrived in the town's vicinity along him. The Witcher began looking for the Kingslayer's trails. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm in chapter two. Gosh, chapter one was so long. I was wondering, is the game even still divided in chapters? What the heck? How many chapters are in this game? Gosh, I've got a massive game in front of me if I'm just now in chapter two. All right, and here we are, the death to the traitor one. As always, the cavalry came late. Though Roche later boasted that he had saved the Witcher's skin, the battle in the courtyard of Luido's mansion ended with a clear victory for the good guys. That's me. The enemy was beaten, disarmed, or routed. At a crossroads, Vernon Roche. But did he choose Roche? Yes, he did. Geralt agreed to help Roche in relieving Flotsam of its troubles. The problem had a name, Lurito. After dealing with the commander, both uh, after dealing with the commander, both wanted to start searching for Triss and this Mystic River one. Let's see. Geralt found a letter to one Deathmold. Oh yeah, that's right. That's that guy right here. In, a, in the mailbox in Bernard Dorito's mansion. It suggested that the commander had not been all that upset by Volta's death and seemed more interested in King Hinsult's health. Apparently, Dorito was colluding with the Cadwinnies and had far-reaching plans. The commander also apologized for his mother's behavior, which confirmed the rumors that she was eccentric. And I guess, oh, this one's failed. But did he choose Yorvith? No, he didn't. Our hero decided to cooperate with Roche. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. 
Um, rest assured, however, the Witcher will cross paths with the warlike Scoyatel again, so I'm going to see Yorvith again at some point. Alright, are there any... Arnold, um, unfortunately, mortality rates are terrifyingly high among spies who are captured and then proven co uncooperative. Arnold failed to survive his interrogation, and so this living proof of Kedwini scheming was history. Um, let's see, Marietta Lurito. Having met with the Commandant of Flotsam's Town Watch, I did not expect his mother to be a charming old lady always prepared to treat her guest with, to fruit and tarts, yet Geralt's experience with the hag destroyed any illusions I may have still harbored regarding Lurito's family. Marietta proved to be a drug-addled creature living in her own world of madness and hatred. Thus, I think it may be for the better that she is no longer alone living. And then moral. At times, a man is left to wonder whether there are any limits to depravity in this world. The elf woman moral had disappeared from Flotsam many months before and had, was found in the tower in Commandant Lurito's house. At the mercy of the degenerate and his mad mother, beaten and abused, she was but a pale shadow of a once proud Ein Sedi. As long as she was with child, the elf had a purpose, a goal to live for. Yet as soon as that child was born, the tormented moral decided to end her life and opened her veins. Thus her tragic story came to an end. Gosh, that was so sad. Alright, just catching up here. Vernon Roche. Vernon, let's see... Vernon was a man of action when he learned of Lurito's treason, he crafted a bold plan to remove him from office. Roche achieved his goal, getting rid of the blackguard L Bernard Lurito. The Blue Stripes captain did not forget the Witcher's help. From that moment on, Geralt and Vernon became allies through thick and thin. Oh boy, I feel like I'm locked into Vernon's root, I guess. Let's see, Yorveth. Fighting side by side certainly helps dispel distrust, distrust. The Witcher kept his word, which Yorvith appreciated, and the path to further cooperation stood open. Yet Geralt ultimately decided not to work with the Scoyatel leader, choosing Vernon Roche's help instead. Thus, the paths of the Witcher and Yorvith began to diverge. Wow! So I guess the split between um, the path that everyone's been telling me the game makes a pretty big split. It's that early? Holy moly, I'm gonna have to play through a big chunk of the game again, <laughs> aren't I? Oh my, not that I'm upset, I just can't believe that there's a whole second side to this game. It's like a visual novel or something. <laughs> I'm picking Roche's root. Alright, Bernard Lurito. Let's see, um, I guess, I'm not really sure where to start, um, I guess right here. We did not learn the full measure of Bernardo Rito's corruption and twisted decadence until we found the elven woman he had kidnapped and imprisoned in his residence. She had been treated with exceptional cruelty. She had been beaten and raped. The man truly deserved no mercy. Yeah, it felt pretty good taking him down. To this day, the people of Flotsam maintained that nothing less than a witcher could have rid them of the town's bestial, self-appointed ruler, Commandant Bernard Lurito. Though he could not match the Cairn in size, he was without a doubt the greatest monster in the area. Many breathed a sigh of relief when the white-haired witcher sent him to the world beyond. And Henself, this is the handsome fella we are playing as right now. I'm actually going to go ahead and read the whole thing so that um, now that I have a face to attach to the person so that I'm all straight with everything because there's a lot of names coming out and I'm afraid I'm going to get them mixed up here. All right, the Witcher once said that in his life he had met thieves who resembled city councillors, councillors who were like begging louts, harlots who behaved like princesses, princesses who smelled like pregnant cows, and kings who looked like thieves. King Hinsel did not look exactly like a thief, but with all due respect, he was not far off. I guess that explains the weak claim on uh, Loremark or whatever here. He owed this resemblance only partly to his bearded countenance, beady eyes, and wandering yet penetrating gaze. 
His annexation of Lormark, called Upper Adern by its natives, at a time when Adern was fighting off the Nilfgaardian horde at its southern border, was also considered a theft. Ah, exactly. The now ki dead King Demavin judged this deed severely and communicated this in curt yet resonant words. Yet that was not the sole reason for King Henselt's reputation as an unpleasant person, much bolstered by the monarch's ambitions and quarrels with his neighbors, and by his ruthless policies toward non-humans whom he persecuted with a passion, squandering his realm's strength and funds. The aging Henselt did not have a living heir, and the rumor was that he had found producing another son somewhat troublesome. Hinsult's virility may have lessened with age, but his ambition certainly had not. The king wanted to wage a war and reclaim Lormark, a province he had already given up once, no matter the cost, and that's what we're doing now. And this goofy-looking fella, Deathmold. Apart from a few chance encounters at official banquets, Geralt had the occasion to meet and speak more extensively with this sorcerer on Thaned Island during the bloody coup when all manner of mages jumped at each other's throats and their council and conclave ceased to exist. Deathmold and his brother Dreithelm, both in the service of King Esterad of Kovir at the time, attempted to remain neutral as events unfolded. To no avail, however, as those who had allied themselves with Nilfgaard thought nothing of the impartiality of others, and many mages simply perished brought down in fanciful ways by their colleagues' spells or pierced by the arrows of the Escoyatel summoned to the island by the plotters. Drethel met just such a fate while Deathmold saved himself by fleeing. Alright, so I see what kind of guy we're dealing with here. Deathmold then filled the opening for a sorcerer advisor at the court of King Henselt of Cadwen and proceeded to place all of his abilities at the monarch's disposal. So, sounds like we caught a couple of rats here between Hinsult and Deathmold. Alright, let's uh, see locations. Flotsam. The Black Guard, Bernard Burrito, surrendered control of Flotsam and its surrounding area to the Kingdom of Cadwen in exchange for a weighty pouch. Profits from trade would now flow to Ard Kara instead of to Vizima. Bernard Lurido's death undid Cadewini plans to assume control of Flotsam and the surrounding area. The new Temerian governor would take care to strengthen the realm's rule in the region. Ooh, I'm so glad then. Flotsam for, for Temeria. Alright, so I guess we're going this way and I can't run, so I guess I was supposed to listen to my party's while oh, while going forward. It's kind of interesting that I'm seeing things from different perspectives. It seemed like the first game was very insistent. Greetings, on... your grace. Oh. Hail to Henselt. Okay, this seems fishy. It seemed like the first game was pretty... Oh, I guess I can't go through this barricade here. I guess I'm going up. But uh, yeah, it seemed like I was always Geralt's point of view, Geralt's perspective. Which, um, you know, when you're dealing with an amnesiac, that makes sense. It seems a little weird that I'm playing- To Townsville, can you feel that? Magic still beats strongly in this place. Shivers run down my spine. Hmm. Strange. Levasig's quadruple sun is a short duration spell. It should have dissipated long ago. An anomaly, perhaps? Not uncommon. The sheer amount of power she summoned? I doubt she retained her complete control. Stop discussing Sabrina Glebesik, or I promise you that heads will roll. <laughs> and Sheila is, is is here. What what is this? It said this is two days after we left Flotsam, so I guess Sheila's how long has she been here then? Alright. What is this with the quadruple suns? Is that why it's so darn bright? Is that one of them? <laughs> more people up here yeah i'm not sure if I, I i think it's cool that i'm seeing different perspectives i'm getting baron fellat has forever hinted that he would gladly Benson. change his color Chadwin. fellat All is unparalleled scum the other nobles are panic-stricken at the very thought of saskia with her peasant and non-human rebels 
They are unprepared to fight and know it very well. And Demavens Cobb? Has he named his price? Prince Stennis has yet to respond, but Felet has assured me. I must see him. Look into his eyes. I'll know what he's made of then. Oh man, this is... Man, I'm really wondering if I should have gone with Vernon's route now. I'm wondering how exactly different everything's going to become. Would I have even come to this area if I had gone with Yorvith instead of Roche? Would I be doing something totally different right now? I don't know. I, I don't know how I'm going to play through the other half of the game. I know I need to read the books at some point, but I feel like I need to play Witcher 3 before I do. I'm not sure what to do. We most humbly greet His Majesty Henselt, King of Kedwan, heir to the dynasty of the Unicorn, Lord of Ard Kareg, Archduke of Banard, and Vanquisher of Nilfgaard. What a mouthful. <laughs> Welcome to Edern. How much do you want? <laughs> Your Majesty surely jests. I couldn't be more serious. How much for your signatures? I like this guy. <laughs> a hundred thousand Novigrad crowns, we thought. To each of us. And the titles of Marquis. Oh. We speak of Upper Eden. Of coal and silver mines. Numerous factories. The sole white marble quarry this side of the Yuruga. And the North's main east-west trade route. We speak of Lawmark. I advise you to adopt the new nomenclature. <laughs> In exchange, we shall swear fealty and acknowledge your majesty as sovereign of these lands. Oh, I'll give you... Oh, why am I making the choice? See, now I'm not sure if I like this because um, I, don't, I don't feel like I know this guy very well. I don't feel like I should be making this choice. I feel like I'm playing Geralt and I should be making choices from Geralt. I... I think this is cool, but I, I don't feel like I should be making this choice. Um, well, if I were this guy, I'm trying to think how this guy is kind of a snake, so I would be inclined to give him nothing if I were imagining myself as the dear king here, but the me, me as the player, I feel like I, I would want to answer I'd give you half because you make some pretty good points. There's a quarry and all this stuff. Um, I'm gonna go with, I'll give you half. I mean, well, I don't, I don't really know. I mean, do I want this guy to, I'm not really sure where my loyalties lie, honestly. I, I like the way this Saskia person sounds. It's like, I want to, I want to go ch check her out, but I don't know. I guess it's neither here or now, right now. Um, like I said, I'm kind of stumped. I'm not really sure if I should go with half. Or if I want to say I'm this guy and you get nothing. I mean, the way they see it, this area was theirs to begin with, right? I'm feeling like these guys would say I'll give you nothing. I, like I said, I feel really weird making this choice. I feel uncomfortable doing this. I don't want to make this choice. I only want to make your alt's choices, so... If I'm Henselt and I'm a jerk, I'm going to say nothing because I say that these lands are mine. Anyway, I mean, the way he sees it, he views these lands as his own, right? So, you get nothing. I shall give you naught for your worthless signatures. I have no need of them. But your majesty, without our support, you'll forever be the invader, the oh. occupying force, the enemy. The folk of Eden... The folk of Eden follow Saskia the Dragonslayer and Prince Stennis. I wish to speak to them. Sire, the dragon slayer approaches, white flag in hand. Ooh. Excellent. Let her pass. This is the chick I want to meet. Just out of curiosity, what does Upper Eden sell for these days? How much do you demand, lass? King, command your vulture to shut his beak before I thrust his cockerel up his arse and twist so hard he'll crow until noon reverts to morning. I have a crush. I... Sire, you must have her restraint. I have a crush. I have a crush. 
Oh, I have a crush. Oh, hold on. Let me sit up straight here. I have a girl crush. Oh, I like her. Oh, I like her a lot. All right. Silence, Death Mold. Will you threaten me as well? You're taking a great, great risk. Okay. Death Mold, STFU. I don't care. Well, okay. Okay. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. I'm get Okay. Like I said, I don't know what approach to take this. I Now, me as the player, I just want to tell Death Mold to STFU because Bay right here. Well, you know, Henselt is kind of, um... I kind of, I, I'd imagine he's kind of a lecherous old man. I mean, I don't know. Like, the me as the player wants to tell him to STFU and let Bay talk, but the Henselt side feels like, um, will you threaten me as well? I mean, he, he seems like the kind of person to throw his weight around, so this seems like the Henselt answer, but... Oh, I know at first I wanted to go with the Hensel dancers, but Bay just rocked my world. I'm sorry, guys. I Bay rocked my world. Shut up, Death Mold. Shut up, Death Mold. <laughs> I've rather taken a liking to this Saskia. Exactly. Say your peace, woman. King, withdraw your army. Recognize Upper Eden's sovereignty and your persecution of non-humans and give them leave to quit your realm. Do this and save yourself and your army. Okay. <laughs> you have balls, woman, but what would I gain? My soldiers would call me a coward. I am Henselt of Ard Kareg. I'll not run from a woman, even if she be a dragon slayer. I see one other solution. You and I, King, here and now, before these folk and the gods, I challenge you. Do it. As in the old days, when the honorable ruled this world, Upper Eden to the victor. The lass has gone mad to challenge a king. I like her. Sire, this is absurd. We shall crush them in battle. They say the lass has slain a dragon. She could be dangerous. Oh, I'll fight. My plans for you are altogether different. Oh, I know I really screwed this up because at first I went through this the way Henselt did, might have, but this is why they shouldn't give me the choice because I'm not probably doing what Henselt would do, but I'm just gonna do what I would enjoy, and I wanna see Bay win, so I'll fight. Precisely why she makes a worthy foe. Don't disappoint me, Dragon Slayer. Please show me how it's done. Begin! Oh, am I gonna have to actually fight? Am I gonna have to be big old fat King Henselt here? <laughs> oh gosh, there's a loads. Oh. Facing one another in a chivalrous duel shall be Henselt of Ard Kareig, King of Kedwin. Sovereign of Cairngorm and Malior, last of the line of the unicorn. And Saskia, the wench who killed a dragon. The victor shall take Lormark. May the god... Oh, we get to do battle, King. Well, shoot, I don't want to win. I'm just... Saskia deals minimal damage. Well, if that's the case, Saskia deals minimal damage. Saskia, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a free pass here. Saskia. Okay, come on, come on. Maybe I got to make her angry. Saskia, come on. Where's the real fight? Come on. Come on. Saskia deals minimal damage. Alright, I'm gonna give you a love tap. I, I don't think I can lose this. I mean, I feel like I could sit here for 10 hours and I'm pretty much sure I'm... Alright. Here, come on, girl. Give me... Come on, you're supposed to fight a dragon. Come on. Where's the damage? Come on, I want you to win. I like you. I want you to... I want you to have this place. I guess it's not meant to be. Am I gonna kill her? Okay, here we go. Ooh. Oh no, no! Oh my gosh, what happened? She got a- Stop! Stop in the name of Kreev, Freyr, and Melitele! Melitele? They say it weird. This... Whoa! What the? What? <gasps> What? Why are you beating up on a priest? What the heck? Well, you're a real piece of work, aren't you? Oh man, I wish I hadn't elected to fight her. I was hoping she'd kick my butt. But King Henselt is... Uh-oh. Oh no, he, he angered the gods. Why would you beat a priest's face in, dude? Of course you angered the gods. Oh my gosh, what's happening? The king seems awfully alone all of a sudden, doesn't he? What? What's going on? <laughs> Wait, no! 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 I wanted to see what happened. I hate this game, darn it. 
Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, Hawked! What's with you, Zivik? Booze made you batty. Don't you recognize me? I'll be plowed and damned. Why the hell did you bring him here, Roach? He's a witcher. I know who the horseman is. Plowing Kingslayer at the gate of a king's camp. Why, he's not even bound. Easy, lads. The witcher's no murderer. I'll vouch for that. As for kings, well, I desperately need to see yours. You're in for a wait then, Mr. Special Mission Knight. Special Mission Knight. Uh oh, the medallion. Something's not right. Don't move, mutant! One of you go get the sergeant, and while you're at it, fetch a solid piece of rope to bind the freak. Come on, Zivik, no need for that. Where'd you say the king was? Out in the fields somewhere, negotiating. Hey, Kingslayer, drop your weapons, or do I need to pack a bolt up your ass? Not again. Don't move! Am I gonna have to get my broom again? Don't even twitch, mutant! Oh, Geralt, oh, that explosion. Oh, that's what that light is from over where the king and uh, Saskia. Are. Hands where I can see him! Shoot! Smash the freak! What the heck was that? Oh, he made a shield? Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> It's getting bigger, I guess. Oh. Oh my gosh, what is going on with this game? It's ah, oh, not another fade to black. <laughs> I, he I heard a name. A, a, a whisper. Oh, monsters? <gasps> Whoa! What the heck? What the heck? Oh dear, this is an interesting meeting of people. Oh my gosh. These specters were my soldiers. It's Sabrina's class. I thought I heard. Edernians are here as well. I thought I heard. My other sights later. We have to go on. Yeah. And your friends. I must focus on our power for the spell. Yeah, I thought I heard a. Um, I heard them say Sabrina. That is the name of my childhood. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is creepy. What are these? I'm trying to figure out what these. Oh, where'd Sheila go? Did she, is she teleporting through the battlefield? Did she go? I know I'm not using any of my spells. I'm trying to. Oh, I'm trying to look her now. Oh yeah, Sheila. Oh yeah, Sheila's got um, got teleport moves. Dang, Sheila. I wish she was a bit more useful during that camera fight instead of screaming at me. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's uh. Oh my gosh, so Saskia is, oh, is gone then. It looks like her people got her out of here. I don't see her on the field at all. It's just the king and um, these soldiers. And the king. Oh, whoa! They all became a super soldier. A Draugr? 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 I feel like I fought in one of these in Skyrim. <laughs> Uh, 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 I, I guess it must be like maybe the name of a, of a, of a, of a special kind of ghost or ghoul or demon or something. Alright, um, oh there's still a big guy, oh there's two of them, okay, so I was wondering what the heck was going on over here, I was about to say I hear a lot of screaming but not a lot of people fighting this guy with me, so, oh, someone got me in the back there. Oh, Roche threw something at this guy. Alright, gonna hit him with a few igneys. A couple of igneys. Yeah, I'll keep going at him, why not? Ooh, you know, I, I need to try out R. Can I knock? Uh, can't. I thought maybe I could knock this guy down or something. Easy enough. Especially with all these badasses here. This is a good force of people right here. Sheila, Roche, yours truly. I heard it again. I thought I heard the name again. Sasha. 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 There's 
something else? I don't know what I'm hearing. Ready! Stay close to me! What the hell? Where did the sun go? It's an eclipse. Somebody cast a curse. Very powerful. What the heck? Look at this. We have to get out of here. This the specters are only susceptible to silver and spells. Stay behind me. I'll try to disperse the fog. I don't think I have to do anything. Look at Death Mold with the with the like homing laser beams over here. So, yeah, I don't have to do a darn thing. Death Mold's got this one. Death Mold's got this one, guys. I don't. I'm just gonna sit here and relax. There's no point in me getting involved. <laughs> yep, I've done. I've done. I've been working hard today. I need a break. <laughs> All right, yeah, okay. I should probably do my job as a witch. I'll, I'll help a little bit. Just a little bit. But Death Mold. Death Mold's pretty darn strong, huh? Oh, oh, there's a bunch of them coming up behind us. Okay, I guess there might get to be a point where there's more than he can handle. Gosh, this doesn't even... Oh, jeez, this doesn't even seem like a real world. All these colors and all this, all these effects, it almost seems like a, a dream world or something. It's hard to believe. Like, it's hard to believe this is the same world as the first game. Everything's so much different. Oh, jeez, the way things are so freaky looking. Hmm. Nothing is quite as freaky as like the night rate or the moon rates and the yeah the dust rates or the sun rates or whatever. It's never six curse. She's out to kill me. <laughs> Stay close to me, sire. It's not far now. Let's hope so. It better not be. <laughs> oh, oops! I don't want to be out in this mess. Oh gosh! Hey, wait, wait, wait. oh, we're going this. We're, we're skiing. We're going backwards. What the heck? It's Prince Dennis. He lives. Oh, no, the wraiths have taken him. Stennis' sword. Well, I'm, I'm carrying too much weight now. Let me. I wonder if his sword is better than what I have. Ooh, 22 to 28. Yeah, that's a little bit better, don't you guys think? <laughs> Just a tiny upgrade there. All right, I gotta toss um, probably like 50 of these short swords. Honestly, whoop! There we go. Much better. Now I've got a decent steel sword. And we're gonna keep cutting these grates down. Ooh, it's a real battlefield over here. Ooh, there's something swarming in the sky. Oops, not that. I was swarming in the sky over there and I think it was swinging wildly. What the? Heck? How many more can there be? This many? Literally this many. There's. Oh, I keep using. Okay, I've been meaning to switch that. Whoops, I think I've been using art on nothing. There we go. I'm gonna have to switch it to me. Oh, gosh. Death Mold, let me have some. Yeah, see, I don't have to do anything. He, I just need to stay inside the circle and then, basically. Alright, it's getting kind of thick right here. Here's some grapes. There's another one there. There we go. Gosh, this is just a. I don't think I've been in such a big brawl yet. This is ridiculous. I feel really useless too. I feel like by the time I walk over here, uh, death mold. The fog is dissipating. We're near its end. Magic has killed everything. Alrighty, since we're near the end, finally, thank goodness. A dirty and nice man. There we go. Got, uh oh, uh oh. Gotta got stay in the circle here. Alright. I heard the name. I hear them whispering again. I can't quite make, make out what it's whispering though. It starts to look at an S. Oh jeez, lots of fire, lots of destruction. I haven't looked at- I want to look at the map real quick so I can get a better idea of where the heck I am. Alright, uh, can I zoom? Oh, okay, we're kind of deep in here, I guess. I don't know, that actually didn't really explain a lot. Whatever. <laughs> hmm. Over here. Right. There's a bunch back here too. This is freaky. I feel really useless. I feel like I don't need to be here though. All this stuff is pretty squishy. It'd be cool to find another one of those crawler things or something. That was cool when uh, all of the bodies came back together. And, oh! Speak of the devil maybe? Oh, oh that's a raid. I thought I was about to get what I wanted. <laughs> Careful what you wish, wish for, as they say, right? Oh, uh, Sheila, you're outside. I don't know if that's such a good idea, Sheila. I need to use some more spell. Oops, where are you going? Oh, there's where he's going. You're all faster than I am. Monsters. 
damn monsters in need. Oh gosh, these graves. The annoying ones. Because they move around and disappear and stuff. There we go. It's like they're keeping us on lockdown or something. Oh my gosh, is this it yet? Nope, there's still that darn wraith. Oh my gosh, that wraith is so obnoxious. It keeps teleporting. There are! Where is it? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> there. And there's some more knights over here. We're not done yet. I thought that those wraiths would be the last of it. They said we were near the end. Hmm. It's kind of excessive. I'm... I mean, I guess it's supposed to be a long journey there, but... I mean, I guess this is my fault. Maybe I'm not... Oh, whoa, 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 Oops. Oh. What the heck? It just turned blue. Okay. I guess we're out of the mist. And... Would this be Arian Fergen? Is this the town, or...? Oh no, yeah, this is right... Deathmold, Sheeler, meet me in my tent. You're to explain what the hell happened there, and how we're to get rid of it. As you command, Your Majesty. I'll tolerate no delays on this matter, and summon all my company commanders. Immediately, Your Majesty. Corporal, I'd like you to watch the Witcher closely. He just pulled me from a magic hell, so I doubt he wants my head as he took fall tests. But I'll not have him wandering round the camp like some stray dog. Occupy him for a time, then bring him to my tent. Mm. Sire, I must request an audience. Later. I'll see my mages first, then the Witcher. Wow. Ah, just lovely. And here I'd hope for a calm little war. Nowhere I might wet my throat around here. Roach. Willing to vouch for this overgrown urchin? He did not kill Foltest or Demavend, if that's what you're asking. You've got my assurance on that. Good enough for me. Let's go, then. All right, so follow Zyvik or convince him to lead you straight to the king. All right, so this is the king's camp, not the city yet. Not yet. All right, let's see it almost seemed like there was almost like a divine intervention type thing there that um like between it's like that weird thing started happening when um Saskia and Henselt were dueling and Henselt was winning overwhelmingly so it almost seemed like something was just like nope but Henselt started talking about a curse so I guess it was a curse I don't know let's see all right, um, I guess I'm, I'll just read the whole thing. Yeah, I, I think I'll just go ahead and spend the last bit here getting caught up on the reading, and then I'll follow Zyvik um, the next next time, because I know that the game's pretty good about um, these follow things when they, they, they're pretty good at waiting for you. All right, um, let's see. As it often happens when charismatic but implacable personalities meet discussion turned into heated crosswords and then into a duel between Henselp and Saskia, and I tried to lose. <laughs> Geralt and Roche crossed the thin barrier between the world of the living and that of the wraith. They entered the realm of shadow. An eternal battle oh, raged between the ghosts of fallen soldiers and the living were not welcome on the battlefield. In the heart of this storm of war, our heroes met King Hinsop, Deathmold, and Shile de Tansarville. Since they were all in mortal danger, Deathmold began preparing a powerful protective spell. Geralt had to defend the sorcerer while he drew the power as wraiths attacked from all sides. Eh, more like Deathmold protected me, but whatever. The spilled blood awoke a dormant curse. The, oh, that's what it was. The sky grew dark and the wraiths of soldiers buried on the battlefield arose from the ground. Another battle was on, but this time between two armies of wraiths. It was then that Geralt entered the scene as always unaware of the historic events around him, but all too aware of the danger. Oh, I love how the game teases you there. As always unaware. <laughs> Surrounded by the ghastly mist and the damned, he, Henselt, and the sorcerer Deathmold started looking for a way out. 
the sorcerer responsible for the king's safety protected them with all with his magic. After a hard time, Geralt finally reached the Caedwini army's camp. Angered by his experiences in the mist, himself summoned Chile and Dethmal to an extraordinary council and entrusted the witcher to Lance Corporal Isaivik's care. This resolute grunt was to show Geralt around the area and then take him to the upper camp, which I will do next time. All right, chapter two, Battlefield. The sight was not much to behold, even on a sunny day, yet it was here that several years earlier a bloody battle had ended in a magical cataclysm. Rocky gullies opened into a plain scarred with furrows and craters dug by trebuchet muscles and magical explosions de detonated by the sorceress Sabrina Glevzig. Or Glev Glev is, yeah, whatever. Tall reddish grass covered part of the flat land and rustling armor and bleached bones of the fallen nestled among it. Once the curse was activated, however, a ghastly mist engulfed a section of the battlefield. Within it stretched a world seemingly pulled from a nightmare, a world in which ghosts of the fallen endlessly reenacted the battle that had claimed their lives. So... The blood from um, from Hensel pounding the priest's face and I guess activated that curse. I like how they've got different outfits here. Looks like maybe this is a colder area and needs some fur to keep warm. Zyvik. Though the generals and marshals are the ones to earn the laurels and honors from glorious battles, victorious campaigns, and successful wars... The core of every army is made up of simple soldiers and non-commissioned officers. Lance Corporal Zyvik of the Dun Banner was the best example. Like any good soldier, he was no philosopher and did not question his superior's orders, yet ruled his subordinates with an iron fist at the same time. His combat experience and years of practice had taught him a few key rules. One sleeps whenever possible and rises whenever awoken. Drinking on duty should be discreet and restrained, and a mouthful of booze must always be left for the superior officer. Good grief. And finally, while on the march, women should only be raped when nobody's watching. Add to that a sense of extreme pride and duties fulfilled, a trait so characteristic, uh, yeah, characteristic of a career soldier, and you get, my dear readers, a portrait of the model Kate Winnie veteran. Well, I don't like this guy very much. Ooh, Triss updated here. All right, let's see. Triss had reached Adern. There was evidence to prove it. Finding her would prove difficult, however. Well, they say she's been in Adern. Dandelion up here changed too. Obviously, when Geralt decided to continue his search in King Henselt's military camp located in a borderland soon to be engulfed by the flames of war, I chose to accompany him. For the Witcher could at times be naive as a child and knew as much about politics as a ghoul knows about cook as a, uh, bleh, as a ghoul knows about cooking. <laughs> Thus, the chances were slim to none that, bereft of my help, he would manage to find new leads without getting embroiled in some trouble along the way. As his friend, I clearly could not allow that. I love Dandelion. He's the best. Now, where did Zoltan go? Did he go with Yorvith? Though it was not exactly Zoltan's cup of tea to visit Hinsult's camp, oh sweet, he's here. A place where non-humans were at best treated with mistrust and disdain, he decided to go with us. Yet he felt rotten, knowing his nearby kin were pre preparing to repel the same cage Winnie we were visiting. Oh gosh, I really don't know if I should have made the choice that I made. Alright, death mold. <clears throat> All said and done, Deathmold was certainly a talented sorcerer. It was only his power that brought the king and his retinue safely through and out of the mist of wraiths. That is true. He did save our skin there. He was very powerful. All right, I've got a face to attach to the lovely Saskia. 
I want to read just her whole thing now. Nothing drives the revolt forward like the right leader, especially one who is a young girl known for performing miraculous feats of valor on the battlefield. From Joan of the Ark Coast to the infamous Falca, history is full of women who led fanatically devoted hosts to victory. Is this Joan of the uh, Joan of Ark? Okay, I, I get it. That's a nod to the actual. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. That's sweet. I'm glad that they added that in there. That kind of a nod to the real woman. Now, I wonder if Falca is someone else historical that I don't know about. Interestingly, all those heroines were not only charismatic, but also extremely beautiful. The squint-eyed gap tooth and pockmarks generally have trouble rousing the masses. Ah. Saskia, whom men, men would follow into a fire, was no exception. She was a smooth-skinned lass with blonde hair, dark brows, large lips, and sh er, large eyes, and shapely lips. Her full breasts perfectly complemented her rounded hips. In other words, she was the ideal icon for a rebellion, I'll say. For, dear reader, if a man in battle receives the appropriate motivation in the form of a lovely female arse, <laughs> he is likely to achieve miracles in its wake. When there is no such arse to lead the way, the freedom fighter's thoughts quickly turn to harvest time, his own woman, and a half pint of booze at the end. I see, you gotta, that's same reason you want to blast, like, uh, Metallica or Iron Maiden or some kind of, like, you know, stuff like that when you're on the march. It's also motivational to have a hot babe. <laughs> News had already reached us of the heroic Saskia, the woman who held Caedwin's armies at bay. At the time, however, it all seemed like little more than exaggerated rumors. As with any true hero, there were many incredible tales about Saskia. Some claimed she was invulnerable to fire, and had thus survived that terrible battle when Sabrina had rained the very flames of hell down upon the combatants. The girl was also famous for killing a dragon. One would be hard-pressed to find better material for a local hero. Yet, I don't know, she had, a troub had trouble doing any damage to, you know, chubby, no virility, gr old grandpa here. Hmm. I feel like she's not all as cracked up as she seems to be. I feel like she's almost protected by some kind of divine force or something just based on that duel there that she couldn't do anything. Ah, and here is Prince Stinnis. After King Demoven's death, Prince Stinnis became heir to the Adernian throne, at least in name. However, pride and a chilly disposition rarely win the love of one's subjects, and that was very much Stinnis's problem. His youth did not strengthen his claim either. Though no one openly questioned the prince's claim to the crown, Stinnis did not have enough support to actually have it placed upon his head. Given this situation, sitting out important events would have been political suicide. The war for the Pontar Valley gave him the ideal chance to bolster his position by demonstrating what a good ruler he would make. History has shown time and time again that when a realm is in chaos, deeds rather than words grant one legitimacy in the eyes of one's subjects. Stinnis greatly desired to prove himself the equal or superior of the Virgin of Ader. He had strong support from the nobility, yet the common folk had few reasons to sympathize with him. He was not lucky enough to leave the ghastly battlefield in one piece, thus the Adernian throne was left without a, a legal heir. So, there's one contender pretty much gone there. So, there is a succession crisis, I guess, since no king, no prince, and now you've got the Saskia here, Henselt here, so we're, we're got all, we've got all sorts of political, and then I guess Nilfgaard is to the south, or, oh gosh, yeah, to the south of here, so, interesting place, Adern. I might, I haven't printed out my map of this place, or of, um, of the world of the Witcher yet. I need to remember to do that. 
All right, Yarpin Zigrin. Our friendship with Yarpin Zigrin stretches back a long time. It began during the famed hunt for the Golden Dragon, which not only was not caught, but also beat up its hunters. Those events were later described in one of my ballads, and anyone interested in the story should read it. Zigrin, like most of his kin, is characterized not by his love of gold, but also by his body sense of humor, sober outlook, pragmatism, and loyalty to his friends. Geralt mentioned that he later met Yarpin and his lads in His Majesty's Secret Service, the Majesty in question being Henselt of Cadwin, for whom they were escorting a secret cargo. Though their own situation was not cheerful at all, they nevertheless aided the Witcher, easily proving that a dwarf won't abandon a friend in need. Alright, so this Yarpin guy is a good dude. Alright, I think I'm caught up on my reading for now. Next time, I'm going to follow this Zyvik. I don't think I'm going to convince him. I'm probably just going to let him show me around. It looks like he's going to wait for me on the... Oh, nope. He's, yep, he's going to wait for me on the other side. Let's go! Uh-oh. Well, I better pick it up uh, here next time because he's yelling. We don't have all day! Oh, he's mad. I better go now. Thank you guys for watching, and bye for now. Let's go!